Brian here at Fitzpatrick's. There's a really, really common question and a common theme, I think, for a lot of people in the last kind of couple of months or even couple of years. They're really confused about different fuel types. What's the best one to buy? So I'm going to do a test. The test is basically to try and give you some way of thinking about it. This is going to be based on costs. For me, a lot of people are concerned am I choosing the right fuel type? And it's really down to a cost decision at the end. That's why they do it. There are other reasons I'll touch on during the video, but I'm really going to focus on what's the best value for money in certain circumstances. Anyway, as a main Hyundai agent, we are lucky in the way that we actually have one car that's got every fuel type. So we've got Kona. Kona comes in an electric car, which has a 64 kilowatt hour battery. There's also a one liter petrol turbo version, which is about 120 horsepower. There's a 1.6 hybrid petrol which is 141 horsepower which basically is a 1.6 petrol engine mated to a 1.43 kilowatt hour battery and then finally we have a 1.6 turbo diesel engine which is 120 horsepower so i normally have a 180 kilometer round trip every day a uh, piece of advice there actually if you're going to meet someone that's a life partner try and find someone that lives around the corner for you anyway 180 kilometer round trip so what i'm going to do is uh, each night i'm going to bring home one of those cars and we're going to see how much fuel or energy the car consumes overnight each evening then when we leave the garage we'll head out onto the n7 which is 80 kilometers an hour over as far as newbridge at which point we'll get onto the m7 which is 120 kilometers an hour and then after nace it becomes 100 kilometers an hour up as far as the red cow interchange when we go through the red cow interchange we'll be heading northbound which is up the m50 again 100 kilometers an hour and we're taking the exit which is Derry ashburn onto the m2 the m2 starts off at 100 kilometers an hour but again becomes 120 kilometers an hour and we're going to go to the end of that which ends just north of ashburn where again we're back on to normal roads which are going to be 100 kilometer an hour speed limits and um, the very end of this journey then has three or four kilometers of back roads as well each evening at the end of that journey we'll have covered 90 kilometers which means then when we jump in the car and go back down the next morning we're going to do the exact same route which is going to cover another 90 kilometers so at the end of that then we'll have 180 kilometers done in each car um, and i think it's good look it's not perfect but it's not a bad test overall because there's different speed zones different types of driving when we get to the end of the video then we're going to use the fuel and energy consumption levels and we're going to factor in the price of the vehicles and we're going to look at it from the point of view of somebody that does very low mileage maybe around 10,000 kilometers a year or somebody that does high mileage maybe around 40,000 kilometers a year I'm going to touch on residual values as well, but they are a little bit unpredictable. But we'll try and talk about that at the end of the video when we're doing the calculations. Day one, so we're going to start off with Kona Electric. As we said already, it's got a 64 kilowatt hour battery. This car is about nine hours to charge it from zero. But a lot of the time people won't charge it from zero. They'll keep it topped up as the week goes. Kona Electric, yay, this is my favorite to drive. But this is the most expensive car. But the reason I love driving this is because it's got 200 horsepower. 200 actually 201 is fun to drive it's got different modes anyway that's not what this video is about this video is about fuel types i can go into more details on that car again however if we are sitting in the eco mode it's currently giving us 100 percent rating in terms of how much charge we have so to calculate the amount of consumption we're going to use the exact kilometers on the car so the car currently has 515 kilometers and then tomorrow when we get back we'll do the calculation i expect that we're going to cover somewhere in the region of 170 180 kilometers so I think it's about eight or nine quid to charge these cars, but I'm going to be a little bit conservative for the calculation. So I'm going to say, let's say it's a tenner, worst case scenario. So we're going to use that as a basis of calculation, 10 euros for the 100% charge. And what I'm noticing even on this first night, this car is extremely frugal on energy usage, even at 120 kilometers an hour. So anyway, let's see how we're looking at the end of this journey. At the end of that journey then so far, we are up to 605 kilometers, which means we've done 90 kilometers overall. And the car has munched up 22, so that's about two odd euros of electricity, 22% so far. But that's a good start off point anyway, so we'll see how we end up tomorrow morning and then we can get into the other cars after that. So next morning, back into the car and 605 kilometers. Yeah. Back down the road, so to complete the next part of the journey, which is another 90 kilometers. Back at the garage, we have used 49% and we've covered a distance of... 
So 696 was 515 when we left. So using my logic, if we overestimate and say it's maximum of 10 quid to charge this car, we've used 49%, we've covered 180 kilometers. That means that we've used about a fiver. If it's, a, if it's 10 quid to charge it fully, then if we've used half the battery, that means we've used about half the money, which is about a fiver. Five euros divided by 180 is about 0.28 cent per kilometer of cost. So in other words, every time you drive a kilometer in this car, it's costing you between two and three cents, 2.8 cent. Day two, we're in the petrol car. The petrol car is actually very well equipped, 120 horsepower, but even things like cruise control and Bluetooth and heated seats and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it's the least expensive out of all the bunch. The way I'm gonna make the calculation, not completely scientific, but I don't think it's too bad a way of doing it. At the moment, there is 998 kilometers in the car, nearly a thousand kilometers, and we have 95 kilometers of fuel. I'm gonna put 15 euros in it, and we'll see where we end up with range. So after putting 15 euros of petrol in the car, we've ended up with an extra 190 kilometers of range according to the trip computer. So if 15 euros is going to get you 190 kilometers, then we need to divide 15 by 190. Which means that we're basically looking at eight, it's 7.8, right? We'll round it off to eight cent for every kilometer. Every kilometer we cover is costing us eight cent. So at the end of the journey, we have covered 90 kilometers. We're up to 1088 from 998 kilometers. Which is about mm, seven or so euros or something like that to do that journey compared to electricity. Which at that point had cost two euros of electricity. The next morning in the car, I was thinking on the way down, okay, there seems to be a massive gap. You're using more than three times as much fuel as you are of electricity. But I think that's why people are getting so confused because they hear, wow, these electric cars, they're much more efficient. But you have to factor in the cost of the vehicle. And we'll see that at the end. It makes a big difference to your calculation. Anyway, so next morning back in the garage, we are up to 1177 from 998. So we've covered yet 180 kilometers again. The cars averaged 7.1 litres per 100 kilometres and we've consumed pretty much all of the 15 euros that we put in last night because the range is back down to 92. That means that 180 odd kilometres multiplied by 0.78 cent after using the calculator is 14, just over 14 euros. Um, really looking at the range, it said like 98 when I left, I've got back, it says I've 93 kilometres left, so I think we'll use closer to 15 euros, something like that. Uh, anyway, if you compare that to the electric car, the electric car cost us a fiver or so, even a slightly less, uh, just under a fiver on electricity. This one's cost us just nearly 15 euros. So you can see there's a fairly vast difference, kind of three times. Day three then, we're into the Kona Hybrid. Kona Hybrid's got a 1.6 litre petrol engine with a 1.43 kilowatt hour battery. So the combination of the two should make it easy on fuel, but I'm really interested to see, can it bridge the gap between a normal petrol car and a fully electric car? So like last night, we're actually sitting at 95 kilometers of fuel left in the car again, but we're going to take the current reading on the car and we're going to add 15 euros of fuel just to see how much extra range we get. After we added the fuel then, we've ended up with 344 kilometers of range from 95, which is an extra 249 kilometers. So 15 euros of fuel divided by 249 kilometers of range, after we use a calculator by the way, is a six cent per kilometer. Every kilometer is going to cost you six cent. At the end of the journey then, we left with 585 kilometers in the car. We now have 675, which means we've covered 90 kilometers. Five and a half liters per hundred kilometers, definitely easier on fuel. And if you remember last night, actually the fuel gauge was down sitting on a quarter in the petrol car. So we've definitely used less fuel. As an estimate at this point, I reckon that we've, we used about seven quid of petrol in the petrol car. This car I think is used about five euros, a little over five euros, five euros 40, I think technically. And then the electric car had used about electricity wise, about two euros, just over two euros. Um, so it is, yeah, it's bridging the gap a little bit. So it is the next morning, actually, one thing that sticks my mind here as well is the car is a lot more frugal than I thought it was going to be, especially at motorway speeds. I was always under the impression that hybrid cars really struggled up over hundred kilometers an hour. But this car is averaging some very good fuel efficiency. Anyway, Let's see how we get on when we get back to the garage. And I'm um, back at the garage. So 765 kilometers, which means we covered 181. First thing I noticed yesterday, I only had about 90 kilometers of fuel left. Now I've got 121, so that's about an extra 30 uh, kilometers of fuel left. Uh, the cars averaged 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers, which when you compare it to the petrol version, which was using seven liters per 100 kilometers, that's a pretty big difference. So while the petrol car cost us 15 euros to do the same journey, I reckon this car ended up costing us about 11 or so euros to do the journey. So that's definitely bridging the gap on the electric car. So the final evening, I'm going to use a Kona diesel. 
So before we start off, this car has one 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 five kilometers and there's 136 kilometers of fuel left. So and after putting 10 euros this time of fuel in this car, we're up to 306 kilometers of fuel. Yeah, 10 euros of fuel divided by 170 kilometers means that that's about 5.8 cent, just under six cent. That's kind of not far off the hybrid actually. Right here, at the end of that journey, 90 kilometers covered. The car's averaging 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers. So I reckon this car's burned about a fiver of diesel coming up the road. Uh, the hybrid car burned about 5 euros, 40, 5 euros, 50 of petrol. The petrol car consumed somewhere in the region of 7 quid. And then the electric car consumed somewhere in the region of 2 euros of electricity. So as you can see, really, the theme here is the electric, sorry, the hybrid and diesel car is not terribly dissimilar. Uh, the electric car obviously the most frugal and then the petrol car the most thirsty so back in the car the next morning from a consumption point of view the thing that really stands out to me is the diesel car is more frugal but not a lot more frugal than the hybrid at the end of the journey so uh 1294 so we covered again about 181 or so kilometers we've averaged five liters per 100 kilometers and if you remember actually we left with about 136 kilometers we were 117 which was probably just over a tenner after the four journeys then, it's pretty obvious, yes, the electric car is the most frugal when it comes to energy and fuel consumption. The second most uh, frugal is the diesel, the hybrid is close with it, and then the worst is obviously going to be the petrol. So I think so I'm starting to understand why people are so confused, because they do arrive in the showroom and they're here to look for an electric car, but they haven't really thought it through because they don't have a framework of how to think about it. So I'm going to try and give you a framework of how you think about what type of fuel type is most suitable for you, and it's really down to the distance that you actually cover. The first example we're going to use is a low mileage driver. So say somebody that lives in Nace and they commute as far as City West every day, 21 kilometers up, 21 kilometers down, that's 42 kilometers every day. And if you do five days every week, and say for example, if you do 50 weeks every year, taking two weeks on holidays, that means you cover 10,500 kilometers every year just to get to work. The second example that we're going to use then is a high mileage driver. So say somebody living in Mullingar, driving 80 kilometers to get to Dublin every day and 80 kilometers to get home in the evening, which is 160 kilometers round trip. Again, making the assumption this person does five days a week, 50 weeks a year, that means they're going to cover 40,000 kilometers per year. Now we know what kind of people we're going to be talking about, we need to figure out how much these people would spend on fuel in the different types of cars. Starting off with Cone Electric, we calculated that this car costs 2.8 cent every time you drive one kilometer. So this means then that the low mileage driver at 10,500 kilometers a year is going to spend 294 euros on electricity every year. Whereas the high mileage driver at 40,000 kilometers a year is going to spend 1,120 euros on electricity every year. The second example then was the one litre turbo petrol and we calculated that that car would cost 8 cent every time you drove one kilometre. Which means our low mileage driver at 10,500 kilometres a year is going to spend 840 euros on petrol in that year. While the high mileage driver is going to spend 3,200 euros on fuel covering 40,000 kilometres that year. The third car then was the hybrid and we did a calculation which told us that that car was costing about 6 cents every time we drove a kilometre. For the low mileage driver then, that would mean that they would be spending 630 euros a year on petrol, while the higher mileage driver then would be spending 2,400 euros per year on petrol. The final car then was the 1.6 diesel. We calculated that every kilometre was going to cost us about 5.8 cent. So in this case then, our low mileage driver was going to consume about 609 euros of diesel in a year, and our high mileage driver was going to consume 2,320 euros per year on diesel. So I know it's not perfect, okay? There is going to be slight imperfections around this calculation, but I'm going on putting fuel in the cars. That's the range they told me. That's the kind of driving I did. I know there's other variables that can affect this, but we're just trying to give you a framework of how you think about it. So the results, they shouldn't be too far out. I think people are getting confused because when they look at these, they say to themselves, okay, if I'm doing high or low mileage, the petrol car seems to be the worst. The hybrid car or the diesel car are better, but still quite similar-ish. And then if they look up here, they see, wow, yeah, okay, the electric car is so much more efficient on energy forward slash fuel usage. And I think that's what people are just getting stuck on. And the second point I want to hone in on here as well is some people are then looking going, mm, do you know what? There's bad talk about diesel and there's good talk about things like hybrid. So I'm going to move towards a hybrid car because if I look along here, the diesel car and the hybrid car, they're not terribly dissimilar. And so for anyone that works in a showroom or anyone that's just been a customer in a showroom, this is what's happening. People are walking into showrooms or doing their research on the internet and because they see good efficiency figures on electric cars or they see hybrid cars being a good alternative to diesel in terms of consumption, they're thinking, yeah, that's the way to go. 
But I think you add another layer of thought to it. So let's think about how much the cars actually cost. So a good specification, middle spec executive petrol, 25,600 euros, including metallic. If you decide to go for a diesel version, you would be adding 2,000 euros to the price of that car, 27,600, again, for a decent executive specification. If we look at the hybrid, it's an extra 5,850 euros over the petrol. Granted, it does have an automatic gearbox. The spec is much the same after that. And then the electric car, it is 16 and a half thousand euros more than the petrol car. I reckon, right, if you had never done any research on this topic before and you just watched the video so far, you would think, oh my God, why would anyone buy a petrol car? But here's the thing, once you start looking at these costs, if you want to save some money on fuel, you're saying to yourself, okay, let's go for diesel. I'm going to spend an extra two grand and I'm going to save 231 euros a year if I'm only doing 10,000 kilometers per year. On a diesel car, however, if I'm doing high mileage, I'll save 880 euros a year after spending two grand. I'll get back into this in a sec. Hybrid, uh, similar kind of stuff again. I'm going to save some money. I'm going to spend nearly six grand though to save about 200 quid a year. Or if I'm doing high mileage, I'm going to spend again 5850 to save about 800 quid a year. And then the EV car, I'm going to spend 16 and a half grand if I'm doing low mileage to save myself about 500 odd euros per year. Whereas if I'm doing 40,000 kilometers a year, again, I'm spending 16 and a half grand to save about two grand a year. So again, starting off, if we buy a petrol car, should we decide, and what I've done with this column here is I've decided to combine the idea of how much fuel is saved versus how much extra you had to pay in the first place. If you're doing low mileage and you buy a diesel car over a petrol, it'll take you 8.6 years to get back the extra two grand. If you're doing high mileage, it'll only take you 2.2 years to get back the extra two grand. So what I'm saying to you is it'll take 8.6 years to get back the extra two grand in the amount of fuel you save over that time. Moving on down, uh, the hybrid car, again, it'll take 27 years. If you're doing low mileage, it'll take you 27 years, saving 200 quid a year odd to get back your full 5850. Uh, with the hybrid car, if you're doing a bit of mileage, then after seven years, you will reclaim back the extra 5850 that you've uh, initially spent. And finally, with the EV, if you're doing low mileage, it's going to take you 30 years to get your money back. And even if you're doing high mileage, it still takes eight years to get your money back. And most people are not going to keep an electric car for eight years. Time for some conclusion. So what is the best car? Well, there is no best. So it really depends. Everyone's different. It depends on which mileage you're doing and it depends how long you're going to keep the car. But in general, if you're doing 10,000 kilometers a year or there, thereabouts, then you got to buy the petrol car. You just don't do enough mileage to cancel out the extra cost of buying the other ones. You just won't save the money going to the pumps. Anyway, if you are doing mileage, so say 40,000 kilometers a year or even a little less or definitely more, then you need to buy the diesel car because as you can see, you will spend two grand extra, but you will save over two grand in fuel in the first two years, which means after two years you're saving money and it's kind of simple as that when it comes to cost exercise and that's what i was trying to do here it is a cost exercise but what does that mean from my opinion in terms of the hybrid or the electric car there's more to a decision for some people than cost i mean the hybrid car is a really nice car because it's automatic and it's got some nice extra specification like 18 inch wheels it's got things like wireless charging on the inside as well and they're quite nice when you're running in the battery mode cruising around town because it's nice and quiet and relaxing and while it's hard to judge right now, they are going to be worth a little bit more than their petrol or diesel counterparts in a couple of years because they are automatic transmission. And what I found over the years, there's always somebody that's looking for a nice automatic car. How much extra it's going to be worth? Mm, I reckon maybe they might be worth a grand or 1500 quid more. Still doesn't mean you're going to really get the break even point down an awful lot, but that's the kind of car you bought for yourself in the first place. You wanted a car that had those kind of characteristics. So I think the hybrid is for somebody that's not cost orientated as much and they're just looking for a really nice car and they want to start moving towards future technology. Which brings us to the final car being the electric car. For business users, they will get the benefit of no benefit in kind in terms of taxation, but for the private person, it's really for somebody that wants to make a statement in terms of how they think about their carbon footprint or somebody that just wants a really nice interesting and powerful and also novel way of getting around the place because this is a really nice car to drive really quiet but really really powerful as well in summary so if you as we were saying do low mileage by the petrol car if you're doing high mileage by a diesel car and the hybrid and electric cars are really just where it's more an emotional decision and you want a nice car to drive it's not a financial decision and that's kind of the way to think about it so hopefully the video has been useful hopefully it's given you a framework of how to think about uh, what is the best fuel type for you and if something you want to know uh, give me a shout 0861 843-1945. It's hard to factor in
in things like residual values at the end. Yes, I think the hybrid car is going to be worth a bit more because it's automatic. Uh, the electric car is going to be hard to judge depending on how range is going, battery lives go. Um, so anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. So thanks for taking time to watch if you watch the whole thing and uh, hopefully chat to you soon. If there's any other information that you'd like to know on cars or other videos you think that would be useful, let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do because it lets me know that you think the video is useful.